Welcome back. Futures are mixed this morning. Stocks searching for direction after China's social unrest and lockdown protests weighed on global markets yesterday. Right now, the Dow Industrials are down 65, but the Nasdaq is up about 15. S&P 500 exactly where it closed yesterday, unchanged. Joining me right now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer. He's the founder and managing partner and author of DividendCafe.com. David Bonson is here. David, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Good to see you, Maria. So yes. you are launching you. today a six-part series in defense of free markets. Tell us more about it. Yes, it's at National Review's YouTube channel. It's called No Free Lunch, and I do interviews with Fox's own Larry Kudlow, with Father Sirico of the Acton Institute, other scholars and leaders that advocate for a free society and try to make the moral case for free enterprise that is too often missing from us on the right. Well, that's what we've been trying to do all morning long this morning, given all of the attacks on freedom and liberty, whether it's from big tech or from the Chinese uh, Communist Party. David, what has been the impact of these uh, the, these protests on the ground in China? Obviously, it had a big impact on markets yesterday. But do you think this blows up and becomes bigger than what we're watching? Well, I think it's possible it blows up and gets worse. And I also think that the protests end up gen, uh, generating a really great response because the market response yesterday was fear of supply chain, that there's going to be more disruptions in China that end up having a domino effect here in America. It reinforces the whole point that that dependency on U.S. business efforts in China has a trickle-down effect that could hurt our own economic output. The Chinese people are right now protesting against something that they should be protesting against. These lockdowns are insane, and it has gone on for far too long. But where American interest kicks in, Maria, and I know you know this as well as anybody, is that our sort of tethering to Chinese economic activity has to be rethought. I'm not a protectionist. I'm all for the idea of global economic activity. But the U.S., for economic reasons, has every motive right now to not be dependent and held hostage by Chinese policy. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, we need leadership in that regard. And right now it feels uh, like we're not seeing the kind of push that one would expect uh, in America from the leaders here in Washington. But, David, I want to get your take on economy and markets issues. Federal Reserve policymakers James Bullard, John Williams, even Lyle Brainerd, all expecting and uh, voicing uh, the fact that we need to see more rate hikes and that rate hikes are on the way. The comments coming ahead of Jay Powell's speech tomorrow. He'll speak about the economy and the labor market tomorrow. And, of course, the final Federal Reserve meeting of the year is in two weeks, December 13th and 14th. Give us your take on the Fed and how that may change the macro story and the uh, markets in 2023. Well, I think that we pretty well know that a rate hike is coming here in December. The futures market is still indicating it's more likely to be half a point instead of three quarters of a point. And then going into 23, I believe they're going to pause. And I think they're going to pause sooner than later. The reason being that there's no question at this point that the inflation levels have started to come down. I don't think that's because of Fed activity. And I certainly don't think it's because of Biden policy or administration activity. It's because of the natural fact that supply chains have started to reopen and that there is much more production capacity and output taking place in the U.S. However, mm -hmm. Um, the, the Fed right now is going to start getting pressure. You see Elizabeth Warren, even progressive, saying, wait a second, you can't keep tightening and then not have it affect laborers, workers, wage earners. Um, the, the Fed has already taken on far too much authority in our economy. And the idea that they caused all the inflation means that they're going to be responsible to cure all the inflation. And neither thing is true. The Fed just has too big of a role. They need to quit intervening so much. I expect they will end up pausing in first quarter.
Okay, so what what does that mean in terms of the macro story? We're already seeing uh, a number of industries get hit. Housing data continues to show weakness. The Case Shiller Home Price Index predicting home prices fell in September, but are up almost 11 percent for the year. Mortgage rates back below seven percent, David. But we went all the way up to seven and a quarter percent, and that certainly did create demand destruction in housing. Are we going to see that elsewhere? Yeah, it's interesting. My perspective on housing is sort of standalone from the way I would look at a lot of other goods inflation. The reason why I'm not bothered, Maria, by housing coming down is because it was way overpriced. It was in a bubble that was created by artificially low interest rates. So with housing, the interest rate had to come up because prices were so distorted. It's almost like we've seen this movie before, right? And so I do think you're going to see how home prices come down. And I think that's because the last surge of prices up was just far too excessive. Um, the issue will then become what, trick, what kind of other effects there are, knock-on effects in the economy. There's a lot of people in our country employed in real estate. That's something to watch. Yeah. And let me just add one more thing to that, because they've got the child tax credit Mm -hmm. that they want to get out. Democrats wanting to expand that bad policy. David, that's just more inflation. Right. Well, what I think it is, is it's distortive. And and so the, the child tax credit is likely going to end up with bipartisan support to extend. I think this issue with the student loan deal, it's candidly, it's an unbelievably bad idea and very reckless and dishonest. I mean, even the Biden administration said over a year ago it needed to stop. I don't believe it's going to have a significant impact on inflation just in terms of on the margin. It's a very small ball endeavor, but and it's been baked in. This goes back, you know, a year before even President Trump left office that they stopped these payments. However, it's wrong policy and it's and it is distortive and it does favor one class in the society versus another. I think it's wrong. David, thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. We so appreciate you, David Bonson. We'll be right back.